What's up, y'all? So this is Leash Unleashed, back with another video. They will ask me who I am. I am Unleashed. I gotta get used to looking at the camera and not at the screen. Um, <laughs> and since I'm talking about my camera, I'm gonna go ahead and just plug that I'm kinda excited because this is going to be my first video recorded from beginning to end on my camera. LOL, if you missed why that's like an amazing thing and just my testimony on how this came about, go watch my last video. But if you here today and, and if you seen the title of the video, then you know that we're talking about boundaries. All right, we're going back to boundaries. So real quick, if you ain't new here, you already know what's going on. But if you are, I'm Leash. I am an author, poet, speaker, survivor. Survivor of narcissistic abuse, sexual assault, and coercion, and emotional abuse. And I use this platform to honor God and to honor myself and to honor the life that he has given me. And the long and the short of it is after going through what I went through, I went through a season where I didn't know if I wanted to live nor if I deserved to live. And God penetrated that season where I was contemplating whether or not I was worthy of my life and told me that he loved me. And I think my life started whenever I went on the journey of trying to figure out why. Why would a guy who don't need me love somebody like me? And my journey back to him and to myself kind of transpired through me writing poetry, writing my story through words. It was his love for me and my love for words that essentially saved my life. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Why I'm talking about boundaries. One, because the Lord won't leave it alone. He will not let it up off me. <laughs> I got to do it because I don't feel like I can go any further until I'm obedient. There's so much that I could say about the different layers of leash the different petals that I have found that are a part of who I am, a part of my existence, my identity. And we here today stroking that one that has to do with using what God has given me to survive my own circumstances, to inspire, encourage, and uplift those who have been where I've been and those who want to avoid where I've been, quite honestly. And so I'm good with it. I asked the Lord a long time ago to make purpose for my pain and this is how we do it. And I'm very excited about it. One, I am super passionate. The Lord has a little fire in me around telling people what his standard for us always was. We are his most prized possessions. And he ain't never meant for us to settle. He's never meant for us to experience anything mediocre, lukewarm. He don't even he don't even do that. And so when I started to look for God and what I went through and like where there was a lack on my part, it was just that I did not believe that I could have better. I believe in love. I've been a lover of love since I was a little girl. And the same is true for me today. But I see in my actions now when I reflect, like I did not believe that I deserved a good, healthy, beautiful love. And it's become more and more apparent to me in my healing process that that's all that God wants me to experience. So what am I doing? If it's anything other than what Christ's love for the church looks like and is depicted as in the Word of God, then it's clearly not for me. And so that's why we're here. And that's what we're getting into today. Because apparently it must be that we need to start with the conversation on boundaries. <laughs> When we talk about dating to marry, we have to discuss boundaries. Now, you know that I posted a short a little while ago about boundaries, and I want to make it plain right now that my pool, or the Lord's pool rather, on me to talk about boundaries goes back a whole year. So last May, and y'all, I journaled it, May 19th, 2023. And I went back in my journal just so I could just tell you, like, literally what was going on when it was going on so last year may the lord really like sealed my deal i've been in a healing season for a minute and what i learned in my dangerous prayer season that's what i call it it was the season where i had confessed my fears to god knowing that where i had fear was where i trusted god the least and when i tell y'all the shorthand of this is that god literally uprooted all of that he made me to face each one of those things that were my greatest fears of life at that point and in that season and essentially he did that so that i could have a greater faith and that's a crazy story honestly if you want to read about my life my experiences and i and have your faith invigorated as a result read my books start with the sunflower project it ends with consumed but i'll give you this 
I was put in a position last May where I had an opportunity to choose. Now I'd gone through quite a few things where God told me that like my fears ain't so big. He's much bigger than anything that I could have apprehension about, than anything that could shake me. It was one of them things where something that I felt like I couldn't live without, someone I felt like I couldn't live without, that the Lord had separated me from, was back in my life and asking for me and wanting me to be with him. And I had the option to take him at face value, to receive everything he was saying to me as truth, and to accept him back or to keep trusting, keep waiting, and know that my, my dangerous prayer season was not in vain. I truly didn't believe that I went through everything that I went through just to go back to a unhealthy relationship. But more than that, just to be transparent, there was a lot of friction there because I think I was in between leashes. Like, I could get the choice to be who I have been or to try God to let all of this add up to something and to do something different. I decided not to go with option A and to go with option, trust the Lord, do a different thing, go in a different direction, let my life continue to go forward. Something that I've been praying for for years. And so there was a lot of victory there for me. But immediately after that, I felt very weird. Like, well, what is life now? And I told y'all I'm a survivor of abuse. So when you really have gone beyond that, that point where you've been in captivity, it's like there's a whole other world to live within and other things to have hope for. But it's weird. It's like my whole life was this. So now that that door has been closed and everything attached to it, everything that I had hope that would come from it, now that I'm, I'm closing the door to that what is on this other side and the first thing that the lord hit me with was the need to establish boundaries so running this down quickly the first thing that got my attention I, i'm in a clinical mental health program and the i had an assignment literally this the 19th so it's been a week since i've had that opportunity to close that door so i have an assignment in my master's program around boundaries and how essential it is that counselors have them with clients and particularly how to use them whenever a client has romantic feelings for a counselor or if the counselor has romantic feelings for a client and so there was a lot of context for how to navigate that so as not to harm the client then I spoke on a panel actually I spoke on the panel the day before or the day after I had that situation so the panel thing came first but I spoke on a panel about mental health and I was asked a question about boundaries and I just told them straight up like you know what I don't know I don't know how to navigate that and I told them what you have already heard me say in my short video on boundaries which if you missed it you can go back and look at it but just basically that as a victim I did not feel like I had a right to my no I did not feel like I had a right to my boundaries I felt like I had to be accessible all the time in every way in order to keep my person or in order to satisfy my person not make them angry not bring on any punishment and so I told them that I'm like you know what I don't know but they brought it up so <laughs> there's that then there's a class situation and then after that my mentor tagged me in a post on Instagram about boundaries and then the last thing was I got a bible plan reminder about this plan that I never finished called good boundaries and goodbyes so at that point I'm like okay the Lord clearly wants me to learn about boundaries and so I'm like okay where do I start what I did was do a google search what does the bible say about boundaries got so much stuff back then I went even further maybe try to concentrate it a little bit and google Jackie Hill Perry and boundaries but Jackie Hill Perry is somebody that the Lord has already affirmed is a bible teacher y'all I'm gonna just plug this it's so many people out here in the world talking you gotta pray seek and ask the Lord about who is saying what he affirms, who is saying what he has led them to say. I, I don't let a whole lot of people in my head because I pray for a sound mind. I don't trust a whole lot of influences. I will say to you that this is somebody that the Lord has affirmed for me is, is God sent. So if you want to research Jackie Hill Perry, please do. But <laughs> everybody does not need to be talking. And they don't, everything that everybody say is not God approved. So anyways, I chose to Google search her, figure out if she's ever taught on something about it because she is got approved in my life. So went there, did a little bit of digging. Okay, cool. Moved on about my life. I didn't really start going hard to learn about boundaries and start to set them for myself until I started therapy in the fall of 2023. So with all of that being said, the question that I feel like is on the floor today and what I really want to address today is how do we go about setting boundaries in our relationships, especially when we are trying to date 
to marry. And honestly, I think it goes either way. Even if you just, you know, dating to get to know people, to get to know yourself a little bit better, still boundaries are essential. They essential for our independent living. And so I got a couple of things. The first thing that I want to say is if you ever felt guilty about wanting to set a boundary or needing to set a boundary, you can release that. And I hope that this is what frees you. The Lord got boundaries. He has them with us. So if he got them, <laughs> That's a clear, plain old way to know and be affirmed in the fact that we need them, right? In the Garden of Eden, when he tells Adam the commandment, like, you can eat of every other tree in the garden, but do not eat from this tree. That's a boundary. We know what happens whenever they eat from the tree. Boom. Sin and a broken world. That's one. Another one that comes to mind often is that the Bible says that the body was not made for sex, but rather sex was made for the body. Meaning that we shouldn't allow sexual desires to be driving us like the Lord has ordained sex to happen in a certain way to be experienced in a certain way and it is not lord over us you know what i'm saying does that make sense so with that being said there are boundaries literally listed all throughout the word of god any commandment that he gave was a boundary any expectation that he set for us it's just like setting a boundary like and he's giving them to us for our protection Right, and I'm a living witness that there are some things that I know that I have experienced that the Lord did not intend for me to experience because I just had to go see. I had to try it. <laughs> I didn't honor the boundary. Hear me say, if we can grow in trust in our God, then we could probably avoid a lot of hardship because some stuff we go through, I truly do not be feeling like he mean for us to go through. But I'm gonna stop right there so we can get into what I actually want to say today. I feel really excited because now I can have my notes on my, on my phone in my hand and still be talking to y'all on my camera. <laughs> so I've already said, let it give you permission. The fact that God has boundaries is a surefire way of saying that we need them and we need to establish them in our lives. The way that I used to teach this to my kids, and I'm, I used to be a behavior coach for middle school at-risk students. So I would have them in small group and I created a lesson about boundaries to explain them to them. And the way that I taught it to them, I asked them to think about the game of basketball and how the sidelines and the baselines are like boundary lines that protect the game of basketball. Meaning people who are in the stands can't just come onto the court where the game is played. That place is just for the five players from this team, the five players from that team, and the whatever number of refs that run the floor, right? And then I asked them, I would ask them like, what happens if you step on the boundary line within the game? You lose possession, there's a penalty, right? So we went through a couple of the rules or whatever to make it make sense to them. We talked about the relevance. Like, why does there not need to be more than 10 players on the court? Because you don't want nobody to get hurt. Why do people not need to be able to come onto the, onto the floor while the game is going on? So the players don't get hurt. They were able to understand from that, these lines are meant for my protection. There is a penalty when people violate the, the standard, the boundaries that are set within the rules of the game. And I think we could think about our boundaries in the same way, right? These are the standards that I set that protect me and my experience in this life. These are the lines that I put in place. And a lot of the lines that I have, God already wrote and, and spoke, but these are the lines that protect me in my living. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I keep saying that. I say that when I teach, but I'm talking to a camera. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so I want to just kind of move forward with that and answer the question that's on the floor today. And that is, how do we actually go about setting boundaries? The first thing that I have is this. Assess what it is that you want to keep safe, need to keep safe, and establish where the line should be. So how can you do that? Number one, you can ask yourself some questions like, what do I want to protect? For me, examples would be, I want to protect my relationship with God. I want to protect my time. I want to protect my mind. I want to protect my body. I don't want to be in another situation that mirrors, looks anything like what I've been through before. So while I'm willing to give love another chance in my life, like I'm not, I've not been made bitter or closed out to the idea at all. I told y'all already I'm a lover of love. <laughs> so while I don't feel any resistance to the experience and would rather really just meet my husband and not have to go through no more dating and still even dating him, I'm gonna have to have some boundaries. But the point is I don't want to have anything that look anything like what I've already been through. So I want to be more accountable for what I allow. 
I want to be more accountable for paying attention to a red flag when I see one. So these are things that I already know I don't want to compromise in my relationships or in my dating season, right? A second thing that I can ask myself, what do I value? I value my faith. I value my family and family time. I value creativity. I value love. I value freedom. So what does it look like to protect those things in my life? What does it look like to protect my relationship with God, my time, my mind, and my body? And what does it look like to protect my values? right? Another thing, what makes me, my whole person, my body, mind, and spirit feel safe? And one last one that has to do with some accountability too. What have my past experiences taught me about my actions slash boundaries that I need to correct in order for my protection? In short, how can I do better to stand on business when it comes to my boundaries, right? And I've said that before, you got to stand on business. Like you have to be clear, you have to be consistent. And your actions should reflect the respect that you have for your own boundaries when you're dealing with your partner. Does that make sense? Meaning I don't want to just be a person who say one thing and do another or say I'm not comfortable with that, but then I flirt with it. Y'all follow me? Okay. So once I have done an assessment and I have figured out what I want to protect, what's it look like to have that protected? How can I share this with my partner and it be safe? It be a safe experience for us to explore this without me feeling violated. Y'all, y'all walking with me? I hope y'all walking with me. If after that point I find that a boundary needs to be set, then I want to do what is my number two. I want to develop the language that defines the boundary or put them in my rule book, right? And that kind of brings number three into play as well, which is I want to practice communicating that conversationally, meaning I, I want to get used to hearing myself say no out loud. And mind you, some of these might be a little bit extra to some of y'all, but I told you I'm a survivor, so I haven't had no boundaries in this dating post the trauma would be a new experience for me so i like the idea of having literal written out statements that are in my back pocket living in living with me that i just use as like broken record statements something like i'm not ready for that yet i'm not sure about how i feel about that but when i am i'll be sure to let you know or i'm not comfortable with that or I appreciate your inquisition about my story, but that's something I wanna to keep to myself for right now. If we get to a certain point where I feel a little bit more comfortable, I'd be happy to share that with you. Thank you for your flattery, but I am not interested. Just a plain old no. <laughs> Does that make sense? These are things that kind of live <laughs> within my head. I want to know what it is that I wanna say, and I wanna communicate it out loud. Get comfortable with hearing me say no and know that it's okay, right? So to my number four, if you have to eject people from your life, do it. And I use the word eject on purpose because in the game of basketball, when people have certain violations, technical fouls, and to me, like I define a tick as like something that puts the other person in danger. Like it's a foul, but it's more, it's like a aggressive foul. It's a foul that if we see you do that again, you are gonna have to go. Like, cause we can't trust that you won't continue to do that. Does that make sense? And I think it's even a big deal to say that you only get two ticks in a game of basketball. You get two violations that look like they put somebody else in danger before you have to see. Let me see. I'm about to Google it. Okay, I'm right. If a player receives two technical fouls, they are ejected. If a player is called for an unsportsmanlike act twice, then they are ejected. In fact, a player may be ejected for committing only one unsportsmanlike act if the referees deem the single act warrants it. For the sake of my metaphor, talking about boundaries, let's get into it. If there are two ticks, meaning two violations to your boundaries that put you in jeopardy, put your stability in jeopardy, that is grounds for an ejection, meaning that is grounds for being terminated from my life. Thank you, no thank you. Our course has run. I don't wanna be in this relationship anymore. This relationship is over for me. And it just be like that. If in the game of basketball, you only get two texts, plus there's a there's a caveat there. If there is an unsportsmanlike act that takes place that the referees deem to be completely atrocious, like we ain't even gonna give you another opportunity, you going off a of one strike, you're done. Like, so hear me say, that I get it and I speak from experience and from my own place of a lack of faith when it comes to dating and not wanting to be alone, when it comes to feeling like you need to compromise so that you don't lose this person that you're in love with. 
And I would probably say that the biggest barrier that I see when it comes to us setting our boundaries and following through with them and standing on business for real and making them feel us for real is that we are afraid that if we don't go through with that compromise that we're going to lose them. We're going to lose somebody. And we probably already planned out our whole lives and we probably already have decided like this person is good enough and I just need to be flexible. I'm being too whatever. We probably have talked ourselves and rationalized through so many things already that it just seemed, and when we put so much time in and this and that and the third and it's like I don't need to give up on my investment. My question to all of us would be who is your faith in? Is your faith in your partner greater than your faith in God? Is your faith in the idol of control greater than your faith in God? Is your fear greater than your faith? And this is where it boils down to, do you believe that God is good or not? I believe that our desires are not born solely of us. I don't want to be married just because Alicia wants to be married. I believe that my desire to be a wife and to be a mother was something that was planted in me when the Lord was stitching me together in my mother's womb. I believe that he is involved with what it is that we strongly desire in this world. And because I believe that, I believe that he wants to release to me exactly what it is that will satisfy those desires. What else I believe is that he did not call me to be abused, mistreated, neglected, or that he called me to a, a basic, mediocre, lukewarm experience in life, love, and relationships. This is what I believe, and it's because God is good. The Bible uses marriage as the metaphor to talk about Christ's love for the church. Christ as the bridegroom and the church as his bride. And I know how passionately, how intensely Christ loved the church. He loved the church to the point that he would die for the church. He loves the church to the point that he sits on the right hand of the Father, pleading our cases day in and day out. I just, I cannot see in what we see in the word of God about Christ coming for us, how that is just blah, just basic, just weak, just, you know, okay, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, I'll probably just die for him today. That ain't like, uh-uh. <laughs> How? How? It can't be like that. And with that in my mind and with that as my confidence, with his word, his truth, and his sacrifice as my confidence, I cannot settle. And because I had been there where I was making the decisions and I was trusting in what I chose for myself and not hearing him, not heeding his warning, not trusting that he was good, I can't go back. And I don't know where you are right now. I don't know if you're dating. I don't know if you're at that point in your faith where you are ready to give up everything, to nail every desire you ever had to the cross, to surrender your life, your body, and all things to him. I don't know if you're there yet. But I can tell you that I speak from experience. Even in my singlehood, life has been better in surrender. Me making my own choices for myself without seeking God, without consulting him at all. Me choosing my own husband without consulting him at all. Committing my life to that without consulting him at all. That was captivity. Me thinking that I was doing stuff on my own accord, that was captivity. Me being in surrender to a God who loves me the one who, who loved me, the one who told me so on, on the day I thought my life was ending. Me and surrender there was, was actual life. Me and surrender has been freedom. And this is, this is my testimony, and I, I hope it hit different because I'm single too. <laughs> I hope it hit different today because I'm single too. I, am, I told y'all about my dangerous prayer season, and to be honest, for everything that I had surrendered to God as a fear, I have not seen the opposite of what I fear to be made true, to be revealed in my life at this point. And I have a couple of videos on my channel about what those fears were. But to sum it up right here, quickly, I'll say I had a fear that I would not have a job that gives me thrills while I pursue my dream. And y'all know at this point I'm unemployed. I have a part-time job, but I don't make the kind of money that I was making before I resigned from my breadwinning job. That's the truth. I confessed that I was afraid that I could not have children, after which I had to have a myomectomy, which was fibroid removal surgery, a surgery that, according to um, my first doctor, 
could jeopardize my ability to have kids and I am not married like I'm I'm not trying to have children <laughs> so I haven't seen my kids I have not held my kids not in a physical and then the other thing was that I was afraid that I could not let go of my former partner and everything and everybody that was attached to him and I didn't know whether or not I should he is not in my life he is not my partner he's not my person I've accepted that and I'm good with that but I'm not dating um, I, it's just me out here. You feel me? And so saying that to say that I'm very much in a waiting season and I'm giving y'all live, live footage of where I am right now today. And I feel like I need to do that because I want y'all to know where I've been on, on my good days, on my lowest days when it's real hard for me to believe and keep trusting. I want y'all to continue to walk with me and see so that we can all celebrate on the day that God shows his hand and on the day that this becomes more than just my prayer. It becomes my, my lived experience. And so I hope this encourages you. The last thing that I want to say when it comes to boundaries, okay, two things that I think I want to say last. And one of them is that me and one of my best friends, we did a conversation on love a few years ago now. And she mentioned something in the conversation. I ran it back not too long ago, but she mentioned something that I feel like applies here. If you want to know how well you're doing with your relationship and honoring your values and what you have said needs to be protected within your life in your relationship, have check-in points. It could be time-based, like every month, y'all, you and your partner, y'all check in, see how things are going, and if you still feel safe, seen, and protected, and vice versa. Or, you know, of course, as things come up, but I would say it could be every month, it could be every week, it could be whenever you feel moved. <laughs> I mean, whenever y'all decide to have a conversation, but come up with points that you want to reach within your relationship. Well, y'all just have have a real conversation about where you are. That's a good way to hold each other accountable. And then the other thing that I would say is I was listening to, I think it was a podcast, and I'm not sure. I believe this was a quote from Paul that they quoted in the podcast, but I'm not sure. Either way, it's something that I want to share right now. And it's just that if I was a servant of men, then I would not be a servant of God. And that just sounds like it can't be that I'm subservient to Christ and I'm also bending to your will. I actually have a poem that I want to share from the Sunflower Project. It is on page 38. The best way to describe what we turn into is to describe the puppet and the puppeteer. He reached inside of me, grabbed onto my heart. He spoke into it. He gave me permission to speak only that which left his lips. Words in my voice, masked with his influence, he pulled my heart's reins to move me to please him. I bend it to his will, like my spine was as weak as a dandelion stem. I transformed into exactly who he allowed me to be. And I want to say that in conjunction with that phrase because who he allowed me to be was not me. Who he allowed me to be was not who God called me to be. This poem is literally a description of what it is to live a life without boundaries. What it is to live a life as a servant of man and not a servant of Christ, not a servant of God. And honestly, I could use a different word because this was not life. This was not living. Nobody has the authority to tell you who you should be whenever God has already stitched it into your mother's womb when he was shaping you in your mama's belly he already has a purpose and a design for you to fulfill he already crafted you into who you are being a servant of God and not a servant of man is to say that he is Lord of my life not my partner he is Lord of my life the one who loved me first the one who loves me best he is my all you cannot come before him what you want, what you say cannot be in contrast to what he wants and what he says. And my camera is about to die, so I guess that's telling me to wrap it up. But I just wanted to also say love makes us feel a whole lot of other things. And for example, and my abuse story started whenever I was very young. So I can remember being in high school and missing a couple of phone calls from my then partner and calling him back later for him to like answer the phone be like nah you wasn't available whenever i called you da, 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 and um hanging up the phone and so calling back he don't answer text him he don't say nothing cool then 
I received that as my punishment for not being at his beck and call. Mind you, again, I was a child. I don't remember what I was doing. It really don't even matter. The point is, we are not meant to be in relationships where we can't have a life outside of that person. When I grew older, that same behavior manifested into more extreme punishments to me. And in that time, like I said, I taught myself that I don't get to not be available whenever he calls me. Otherwise, I'm going to be punished. Otherwise, he's gonna be unhappy. I taught myself that as a child and so, or as a young girl, like a teenager. And so instead of it being, he need to be secure enough in himself that I don't got to pick up my, I don't need to be available every four seconds. Like I, I, I'm not, I don't live for him. <laughs> like I can't be free like that and be me. And I'm telling you like that attitude definitely shifted into more severe punishments in our adulthood. But had I known what a boundary was, had I known that I had a right to my boundaries then, I may have seen a red flag. I may have known this is not love. I may have known, hey, it's time to eject this person from the game. But nonetheless, I don't want that to be nobody else's story. And like I said, I know love makes us feel a lot of things. And we want to be devoted and we want to be loyal and we want to be solid. But if your partner is asking you to make him or her Lord of your life, they are asking you for an impossible thing. And I know that the end result of that is to lose yourself. Now, thank God he is good because in even through all of that and everything else in the Sunflower Project, here I am today as Unleashed. And... I'm telling you, God is good, God is real, and that this broken girl, the broken girl that I was is not who I am now. And the broken girl that I, I was is something that I never want to see another human being become. And can I just say that brokenness is not where God has called us to be. He called us to a life of peace. And that's what I want for us. And on top of that, I want us to have, how I put it in the Sunflower Project, I want us to have a dangerously intense, recklessly stable, terribly fanatical, erupting, and potent, world-shaking, heart-throbbing, confident, sturdy, trusting, healing, exemplary, divinely orchestrated, and everlasting love. Sound like a lot, but like I said, the Lord don't play by this, so I just feel like our love life should be on that kind of time. So anyway, that's about it from me today. I hope that this was fruitful for you. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you stay with me for this ride. I can see that. I mean, I just feel like it can't get nothing but better. So drop questions and comments in the uh, description box below, but just know I love you. I'm out.